Americans know, but we just can't come to terms with living, with coming to the reality that the reason that we're there for is for our own self-interest. Iraq was a profitable way to, um, for our government to kind of, you know, stabilize the oil markets and also just have a presence there. I think, I think that's really what we're trying to do. Well, they said they invaded Iraq for uh, the, um, you know, all the stuff that they had and they didn't have anything. So it was all a lie. Big lie. Well, I think the United States is in there mostly for oil. Um, I mean, you know, we're just trying to use Iraq as a way to control the Middle East, control our interests in the Middle East. And, you know, um, I mean, it's obvious that the Bush agenda since the beginning has been to go into Iraq and they just use September 11th as an excuse. They all they care about is oil and all of the stuff that doesn't even deal with this so-called democracy that exists today. The weapons manufacturers making the money that is spent on the war in Iraq as well as Bush getting his oil. And um, it's, it's, I think it's about imperialism and about Bush's money. The, um, Saddam Hussein, the president of Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, I think, he, he, um, uh, he, he bombed the World Trade Center with the planes. We heard it a lot of times. Baghdad, April 2003, a city which had seen numerous conquering armies now fell to the armed might of the United States. In the days after the U.S. invasion, the pillage of priceless ancient treasures from Baghdad's museums symbolized the destruction and humiliation America brought this land, the cradle of civilization. Iraq, the ancient land of Mesopotamia, the Greek word for the land between the rivers. Over 5,000 years ago, the Sumerians created humanity's first stable city-based agricultural society, invented the plow and writing. This is where law and accounting were invented and where the Old Testament placed the Garden of Eden. Down through the millennia, the flow of human migration, war and conquest brought a succession of civilizations. In the 13th century, Baghdad was destroyed by the invading Mongols, and the region remained economically weakened until it fell under the domination of the Turkish Ottoman Empire in the 16th century. Under Turkish rule, which lasted until World War I, Iraq consisted of three administrative provinces, Mosul, Baghdad, and Basra. By the end of the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire was in decline and the Middle East had become a scene of growing rivalry among the world's colonial powers. A resource that transcended all others, oil, provided the fuel for the expansion of European and then US imperialism in the region. And oil made the Middle East what the US State Department later called the greatest strategic prize in history. The Anglo-Persian Oil Company, now British Petroleum, began producing oil in neighboring Iran in 1908. 
Winston Churchill converted the Empire's ships to oil in 1912. Airplanes and tanks made their first combat appearance in World War I, underscoring petroleum's new strategic value. During the war, the British, most famously through their operative T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, promised independence to the people of the region, provided they allied with Britain against the Ottoman Empire. At the same time they were promising independence, the British and the French were negotiating the 1916 Sykes-Picot Agreement to carve up the Middle East between them. The British got Iraq, Palestine, and Jordan, and the French took greater Syria, including Lebanon. Like his American counterparts today, British General Stanley Maud declared after taking Baghdad, our armies do not come into your cities and lands as conquerors or enemies, but as liberators. The new rulers of Mesopotamia and their imperial cartographers further inflamed the region by detaching oil-rich Kuwait from the province of Basra and formally making it a British colony. The British-French betrayal triggered a revolt for the independence of Syria, Palestine, and Iraq. The people fought so fiercely that British leaders used chemical weapons against them. Winston Churchill said, I do not understand this squeamishness about the use of gas. I am strongly in favor of using poison gas against uncivilized tribes. Confronted with massive resistance, Britain's Lord Curzon proposed creating an Arab facade behind which the British would rule. Modern-day Iraq was created at a closed-door meeting of British officials at the Semiramis Hotel in Cairo, Egypt. Two pro-British Iraqis were present to witness the scene. The British anointed one of the sons of Sharif Hussein, the Hashemite ruler of Mecca in what is now Saudi Arabia, as king of Iraq. His brother was made king of Jordan. There was no Iraqi national anthem, so during the coronation, the British military band played God Save the King. Their puppet King Faisal was forced to sign a 75-year concession granting the foreign-owned Iraq Petroleum Company all rights to the country's oil. The British ruled Iraq directly and indirectly from the end of World War I until a nationalist coup overthrew the Hashemite monarchy in 1958. After World War II, British hegemony in the Middle East was challenged and eventually supplanted by the American Empire and its voracious appetite for oil and power. must in this country colonize the people in Colombia, the people in Grenada, the people in Panama, the people in the Philippines. Every decade, every year, every month, bombing brown people, how people get elected here, how people run their politics here. It's been going on since 80, 1846. It's been going on since 1790. How did it start here? How can it be stopped? Hallelujah. This wasn't a war to liberate anyone. This was a war of conquest. And most importantly, this war was not a diversion, as a lot of the mainstream Democrats describe it, from the war on terror. It's the embodiment of the war on terror, which is actually a war of terror against the people of this planet for greater empire. I think the most immediate purpose is oil, I have no question in my mind, but the more long-term issue is a strategic. Control of the region of the Persian Gulf area that a substantial interest of the United States as an empire and any other potential uh, imperial tendency by China or Russia or Europe uh, as potentially. So United States is positioning itself in a, in a place that can have con global control. The problem is 
that empires, whether it's the British or the French or the Germans in, in the 19th and 20th centuries, or the American empire before it became a global empire, always act in their own interests. That's the only reason they're there. It's in their own interests. It's not to do the good. It's not to do a war of good versus evil. It's a war of national or imperial self-interest. That is why they are there. And the reason why the whole region is dotted with military bases, and you have the largest foreign base of the United States, the al base in Qatar, a tiny principality. That's where you have it. Why? Because of the oil. Now, I don't think the war in Iraq was exclusively about oil, oil, but oil is ever present in the discussions. And if you read these uh, memoirs dictated by Paul O'Neill to Ron Susskind, which have been published recently, they are very revealing, saying that the plan to take Iraq predated 9-11 and was discussed within the first three weeks of the Bush administration being in office, including how they would divvy out the oil. Now, this is O'Neill talking. This is not some conspiracy theorist uh, on, in cyberspace. what is going on, as much as these have become cliched buzzwords, is true. It is imperialism, it is about dominating the world, and they themselves are actually not that shy about that. I mean, it's in all these documents, the New American Century and all that stuff. I mean, it's a very concerted, sophisticated plan to be the number one power. So we're, we're not conspiracy theorists, we're not people with nothing to do who just like to say anti-government stuff. If anyone who wants to pay attention, just look at these documents and look at, uh, most importantly, beyond documents, look at the action. Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. There has not been one shred of evidence. right now is statistically and point of fact the operation in Iraq which was predicated on the assumption that Saddam Hussein was in control of the weapons of mass destruction have been proven to be wrong I mean they, they, they cheated and they lied their way to, to this war against the will of, uh, of the world both in United Nations and in the fe February 15th demonstrations globally in the streets by people who demonstrated against uh, these wars. They have not been able to produce a shred of evidence connecting Saddam Hussein to weapons of mass destruction. one reason for this. You don't reduce this to one reason. There were many reasons, many reasons for this, which is why they focused so laser-like, as Clinton used to say, on Iraq. Taking down Hussein was seen as a way to shore up the U.S. position in the Middle East. It was seen as a way to shock and awe the world, to intimidate not only the masses of people, but other countries. Taking down Hussein was also seen as a means to fuel this war on terror and embolden people with a quick victory and keep the momentum going from September 11. This is why they were in a rush. Remember the UN weapons inspector said, why don't we take our time? Why don't we wait? 
Bush, oh no, no, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry, we can't do that. Why couldn't they? Because every day they waited following September 11th, the connection between that emotional horror and this war would be diminished. That's why they were in a hurry. You know, it's interesting, now they're trying to cover this whole thing up by blaming the CIA and claiming it was all about bad intelligence and refusing, of course, to investigate themselves and how this intelligence um, was fabrica fabricated. And this is simply an effort to prevent people from understanding the history and the agenda that I'm laying out here. These are not conservatives, they are radical, reactionary statists. They have a very narrow hold on political power. They must maintain it in order to carry out that program. You see it day by day in the legislations produced and the actions undertaken. And they have an international program, which has been announced, dominating the world by force, permanently, preventing any challenge, and in particular, controlling the uh, very crucial uh, uh, energy resources of the world, mostly in the Middle East. Uh, even if it does increase the threat of uh, destruction, in fact, maybe destruction of the species, uh, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, uh, terror which, uh, of which uh, the population of the United States uh, will also be subject sooner or later as before. Every single place, every single location on Earth Iraq, Afghanistan, Persian Gulf, uh, Saudi Arabia, anywhere that U.S. military presence is evident and palpable, you will have an increase, global increase in a number of uh, terrorism. The war on terrorism increases terrorism, not decreases. Look at the, uh, at the evidence. Right now, what happens in, in uh, Chechnya and in Russia, for example, in uh, Somalia, in Morocco, in North Africa, in Central Asia, in Malaysia, Indonesia, in Western Europe, any globally and statistically, we are more prone to acts of terrorism and more acts of state aggression. That is, you have US and UK and any number of allies that they can mobilize committing horrible acts of illegal wars. The war in Iraq was illegal and immoral and had no uh, backing from the United Nations. I think it's totally hypocritical and I think it's totally self-interested and materialistic and I think Cheney and all of them and I think they have it's proven that they have an agenda with Pearl and Wolfowitz and so on you know they had a plan to reorganize the Middle East. I think it's odd that we feel so justified doing this when everyone's telling us it's wrong when the people of its own country are saying we shouldn't be here. Wage. Lower Wait, we have a question. Wage. Just why are you in Iraq and why are you staying there? Oil. Important of all, the job would require men, hardy men, determined men, men who were willing to leave families and friends and journey halfway around the world on a quest that might end in failure. And each man had his own problems to weigh, each his own decision to make, for they were being asked to make a life career of oil in Arabia. We're rich. We don't need to fight. We let poor people fight for us. Poor people can fight for us. We want it all. That's their attitude. They want to tear down other imperialist rivals. They want to crush any states in the third world who stand in their way, Iran, Libya, Iraq, whomever. They even want to further open up their allies to globalization and global capitalism like Saudi Arabia, globalization at gunpoint. Uh, the uh, collapse of the official stories about weapons of mass destruction and terror, uh, 
they did have consequences. In fact, ominous consequences. The most significant consequence of the collapse of the story about weapons of mass destruction uh, was that it changed the official doctrine that if a country has weapons of mass destruction, the United States is entitled to attack it uh, in anticipatory self-defense. What's called in the press and some commentary preemptive war. It's just a euphemism for direct aggression. Uh, as the doctrine's been changed uh, with the uh, discovery that there were no weapons of mass destruction, so that now the United States has the right and authority, uh, sovereign right, to attack any country that has the intent uh, and ability to develop weapons of mass destruction. Okay, that's a significant change. That lowers the bars on aggression very significantly. In fact, it makes it universal. Uh, every country has the ability to develop weapons of mass destruction. Uh, any country with a high school chemistry and biology lab. Where were the two first wars of this unbounded, never-ending war on terror? They were in first Afghanistan, Central Asia, second Iraq, the Middle East. These are the areas which together have 80% of the world's oil and natural gas resources. This isn't a diversion from the economy. This is how the capitalist class aims to strengthen their economy and solve their economic difficulties. This is not a war waged for a few corporations. This is a war waged on behalf of all of US capital, all these multinational corporations. And this isn't Bush the cowboy. This is US imperialism the cowboy trampling on the rest of the planet. What we have is the massive destruction of the infrastructure of a society, a systematic killing of, uh, of innocent civilians, or poor people who have been grabbed by the throat of the poverty, a military uniform put on their back and sent to maim and murder other people around the world, a systematic uh, uh, looting of the national heritage of a country. We have systematically destroyed a nation state and our own civil liberties here in the United States have been systematically compromised. Oil corporation, gas uh, companies, uh, Halliburton, all of these companies, I'm sure they will end up with extremely lucrative uh, contracts coming from this uh, operation. But uh, we like to think that this is a democracy that is serving the interest of 260 million population of this uh, country rather than the specific interests of corporations. What was the first thing we saw during this invasion of Iraq? The first thing that came after the troops was convoys of gasoline trucks to fuel the Humvees and the tanks and the helicopters and so on. So if you have a globe-straddling globe military, and this country has troops in 120 countries around the world, you have to have huge amounts of petroleum and energy to fuel that war machine. The second thing is, is the impact on the economy. Global capitalism in significant ways has been built on cheap Middle East oil. Don't believe me, believe Henry Kissinger. The basis of Western pros prosperity, cheap Middle East oil. The price and supply of oil has an enormous impact on the profitability and on the competitive positioning of all these capitalist corporations. We're not building democracy in Iraq. We know that for a fact. We know for a fact that there will be no elections. There will be no transfer of power. There will be no transfer of sovereignty. There will be no removal of US military troops. There will be no uh, revoking of the um, illegal imposed economic structural changes that Paul Bremer and the US authority have imposed on the Iraqi population. None of that will happen. So, you know, so what is this job that we are intent on finishing unless we do want, if we, the American public, are willing to sacrifice our men and women and to sacrifice our own humanity by killing thousands of Iraqis to finish the job of controlling other people's resources and empowering the rich in this country and empowering military bases. This is, this is the foundation of the entire global capitalist system and in particular the competitive position of U.S. capital. And that's the final point, the third point, oil is a weapon of empire. If you control the flow of oil, you control those who depend on oil. 
A 7,000-year-old civilization slid into anarchy on live TV. Vandals plundered shops, offices, hotels, and hospitals. American and British soldiers stood by and watched. They said they had no orders to act. In effect, they had orders to kill people, but not to protect them. Their priorities were clear. The safety and security of Iraqi people was not their business. The security of whatever little remained of Iraq's infrastructure was not their business. But the security and safety of Iraq's oil fields were. Of course they were. The oil fields were secured almost before the invasion began. This is my third time in the demonstration. My third time in the demonstration. Yep. That's the only thing we want. We want to push a stop to a war in Iraq. The way the guys are talking, saying, so why you Why is why, 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 why the stuff? Why? He, wants, he wants oil. And oil pollutes trees and air and water. What's the use of oil? Anyway, it's not even there. Occupation is a crime, too. Empire is on the move, and democracy is its sly new war cry. Democracy, home delivered to your doorstep by daisy cutters. Death is a small price for people to pay for the privilege of sampling this new product. Instant mix imperial democracy. Bring to a boil, add oil, then bomb.